Hello, dear brothers and sisters. So happy to be back to share the word of the Lord. So today's message, we're going to be talking about the battle belongs to the Lord. So the Lord has been talking a lot about battle and war and fighting because we are in a war. So today's message is so beautiful, just as beautiful as all the other messages are, but the Lord knows what season, seasons we are in and God knows what we are striving to fight for. So that's what the Lord's going to be talking to us about. And she's going to be very powerful. So we're going to be again with prayer and then we'll get right into the word. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We're just so grateful, Father God, for what you are doing, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that the Holy Spirit is moving mightily, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we surrender everything, Father God, to you right now, Father God. We surrender our problems. We surrender those voices, Father God, that will try to speak louder than the voice of the Holy Ghost. We command him to be silenced right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. We will look and we will keep our gaze on you, Father God, our hearts, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, that you open our hearts, Father God, to receive the word of the Lord, Father God, fresh manna, Father God, for you know what we need, Lord. And I just thank you, God, for this word, Father God, that you have chosen, Father God, for such a time as this, Father God. And I pray that it will do, that it will penetrate into our hearts and our minds, and it will do what you have called it to do. And I just thank you so much, my Lord, for every person that is here, Father God. I pray that you bless them, Father God. Give them an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the Bible the Lord wants to talk about the battle belongs to the Lord. And I know that last time we talked about Samuel. And when we were talking about Samuel, we talked about, you know, the guard your heart in the war. That was the title of uh, messages two, two weeks back. So God is still talking about Saul, but today we're going to talk about David and, you know, they're related Samuel and Saul because it was first Saul and then it was David. So today we're going to be talking about David. So we're going to be starting in first uh, Samuel 17, 17, eight. So I'm just going to read through the scriptures and then I'll, I'll stop um, when God wants to say something. Okay. So first Samuel 17, eight. As says, then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel. And he said to them, why have you come up to line to the battle? He's like, am I not a Philistine and you are the servant of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then I will be your servant. But if I prevail against him, he will serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were greatly dismayed and greatly afraid. So here we, we, we remember when we were learning about Saul, Saul was a man of war. He was always fighting the, the Philistines. So here we are once again, the Philistines are coming and they want to, and they want to fight Saul. And as they want to fight Saul, they're coming up to him and it says right here that when they came up to him, it says that somebody came up to her. It says, then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said, why have you come out to line in the battle? He says, am I not Philistine and your servant of Saul? And it, he tells Saul, choose a man for yourself and let him come down who is able to fight me and kill me. And then if whoever wins, and then it says, if you win, I'll serve you. But if you win, I'll, I will have to, you will serve me. But then after that, a number 10, it says, and the Philistines said, I, and the Philistines, so they're mocking the army of Israel. They're mocking God and they're saying, choose a man for you. But Saul is greatly afraid of the Philistines because we know that says that, that Saul was in war all the days of his life. So in the times of the Bible, the kings are the ones that would fight against kings. So in this war that, that rose up against him, he was supposed to take a stand, Saul, to fight for his army. But instead, he got scared. When, the, when it was time to fight, he got scared. 
And it says right there that not only was he scared, but then the other people are mocking um, Israel. And number 10, it says, and the Philistine says, I defy the armies of Israel. We know that the armies of Israel are the armies of God. It says, and it says, and I defy the armies of Israel this day. It says, give me a, my, a man that we might fight. When Saul and Israel heard these words, the Philistines, they were just, they were greatly dismayed and greatly afraid. So here we have the leader, which is Saul. He's the king and he's supposed to be leading the battle. He's supposed to be leading the army, but instead of him standing up and saying like, I will fight him instead, he chickens out and he gets scared. And he, so when you're leading, you're supposed to not be scared when you're leading, you're not supposed to show fear to the people that are under you because you're the leader and they're looking up to you for strength. They're looking up to you to be strong, but instead he is scared of the Goliath. And he, of course, he's scared of Goliath because in, in the natural Goliath is big and the natural Goliath is powerful. And he's looking at himself and he's saying like, this guy is going to come and he's going to tear me up. Because when we go back to 17.4, it says, and a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines. And his name was Goliath. He said, who was he? whose height was six cubit of span. So think about this huge man coming up to you and says he had a bronze helmet on his head. So he was all geared up for war. He had a helmet of bronze on his head. He was armed with a coat of nails and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. So here he comes all like, you know, all covered up and all geared up and says, and he had a bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders it says, now the staff of his spears was like a weaver beam and his iron spearhead weighed about 600 shekels and a shield bearer went before him. So here he comes, right? So everybody in the natural is looking at this man, right? He's like huge, he's strong, he's suited, he's booted. And then they're looking at himself, uh, at themselves in the flesh and they're just saying like, Oh my goodness, this, this person, he's going to come and he's going to, he's going to take us out because he's so strong and he has all this art garments on of this bronze and he's so strong and he's so powerful. So fear starts filling the, um, his heart, but not only his heart, but everybody's heart, because they start looking in the natural instead of looking at what God can do because you know the battle belongs to the Lord so whatever battle we're in the Lord has allowed that battle to form and we have to put our trust to know that God is going to deliver us out of that battle and that the Lord is going to fight for us and that the Lord is going to win but instead he put him hit the trust in himself and when he put him trust in himself he saw that he was nothing but a, a small human and then fear filled his heart and at number 17 it says now um let's go to let's go to 20 17 20 first samuel 17 20 so and it says so david rose up early in the morning so just a little bit it says so so they were all right. So David had three older brothers. David was a younger one. And the dad told the three older ones to go help Saul, you know, to, you know, to win this battle. And, and then after that, so David was a sheep keeper. So that was his job from, from youth to keep the sheep. So his, uh, his dad said, leave somebody to take care of the sheep. He's like, but you go over there to the, to where they're fighting and go make sure that your brother's okay and go and take them some food. So it says 1720, it says that David rose up early in the morning, left the sheep with a keeper and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded. Jesse was his father and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and Philistines had drawn up in battle array army against army and David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper ran to the army and he greeted his brothers then as he talked with them there was a champion the Philistine of Gath Goliath by name coming up from the armies of the Philistines and spoke according to the words so David heard them and when all the men of Israel saw the man they fled because they were dreadfully afraid so the men of Israel said have you seen this man who has come up 
So they're all telling David, like, oh, my goodness, we're so scared. Have you seen him? Have you seen how big he is? Have you seen how powerful he is? Like, have you seen him? And it says, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come to defy Israel. And it, and it shall be that that man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches and will give him his daughter and, and his father's house exempt and give his father's house exemption from taxes of Israel. So they're telling him whoever defeats Goliath, they're going to, they says that they're going to get great riches. They're going to get Saul's daughter and that they're also, um, their David's dad will be exempt from paying taxes in Israel. It says, number 26, then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? And it, I love this part, like, because David, he comes in in the power of the Holy Ghost, and he is not scared by looking at him in the natural because if you look at him in the natural, he's scary, but he comes in filled with the Holy Ghost and he's not scared. But I love this because it's in then when David spoke to the men who stood by him, David says, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? This is my favorite part. It says, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the Lord? The armies of God. So David is saying, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that tries to defy the army of Israel? Because he knows who he is. And number 27, it says, and the people answered him in this manner, said, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. So now the brothers of um, the older brothers of David come up to him and says, now Eliab, his older brother, heard when he spoke to the men and Eliab was aroused against David. Anger was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here? And whom did you keep leave those few sheep in the wilderness? So not only is he telling his brother, he's mad that he's mad that the brother is here, but then he's kind of mocking him because he's saying, like, what are you even doing here? Go back to your little job, go back to your little sheep keeping, go, go, go back to whatever you do. And then the brother starts mocking David, and David didn't even do anything, but the brother says, the older brother Eliab tells David, I know your pride and your insolence of your heart, for you have come to see the battle. And then David said, what have I done there? Is there no cause? Then he turned from towards another. Then he said this thing and the people answered him as the first one did. So, and then, so once again, in the natural People are looking at him as a nobody. And the natural, everybody's looking at David like he's nobody because his job is meaningless in their eyes. And their eyes, he's just a little sheep heeper. In their eyes, he's just a, a little nobody. And the in their eyes, it's just a little brother that doesn't know anything. In their eyes, they're like, oh, you're a prideful little one that you just come to see what's going on. But then David's like, what I haven't done anything. But number now 31 says, now, when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fill because of him. So this is what the Lord is saying. The battle belongs to the Lord. And the Lord is saying, don't let your heart fail in the battle because you are putting your trust in yourself, but you need to put your trust in the Lord. It says, then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and will fight the Philistine. And Saul said to him, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him for you are a youth. He's a man of war from his youth. So here again, once again, David in the natural, he's a little, he's little, right? He's a, he's a little boy. He's the youngest one. He's not a man of war. And even now, now Saul is telling him like, you can't go fight him. He's a warrior. You're a child. Like, what are you doing? It says 34, but David said, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion and a bear came and take a lamb out of it, I went after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from, from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by the beard and it struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. 
and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw and the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. So everything that we go through is for training, right? As we're looking at David, David had this job for many years and his job for many years was to keep the sheep in the natural. It looks like it was a meaningless job it, in the natural. It looks like he was like, he's just like, you know, dirty outdoor keeping the sheep, but the Lord was training him to be a man of war because now everything that we go through in the natural is a preparation for what the Lord is going to be doing in our lives. So here he is, right? A little man. He was hiding. Nobody cared about him. His dad didn't consider him. Nobody really considered him. He was just little old David. And that's how the Lord likes the people that he uses. He likes you to be a little nobody to the world. But they don't know that behind the closed doors, God is activating a warrior. Nobody sees it. You're by yourself. You're in isolation. Nobody can see the anointing that is boiling inside of, of us, right? Nobody sees it. Nobody acknowledges. You're just a little one. You're just a little one. But they have no idea that God is cooking something behind closed doors. And here comes David, right? David was behind closed doors. But then God took him. And he made this position to open up so everybody can see what the Lord had been doing behind closed doors. Because he said, he right there, he talks about his preparation. The guy is like, oh, no, you can't fight. You're not a warrior. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm not a man of war. He's saying, I, I took such good care of the sheep that when a lion and a bear came out, I killed it. And he was saying, and so I'm going to do to this Philistine that everybody's scared of. I'm going to kill him too. And he said, the same way the Lord delivered me all those times, we forget that God has brought us through a lot of battles. It says, as the Lord has delivered me, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And it says, and Saul said to him, go and the Lord be with you. So it says, so Saul clothed him. It, this is so funny to me because now Saul is like, okay, I'm not going to go and fight because I'm the king. He's like, but I'm going to prepare you to go and fight against them. And it's saying, so Saul clothed him with armor and he put the bronze helmet on his head. He clothed them with the coat of mails. David fastened the sword with his armor and tried to walk for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk in these. I have not tested them. It says, so David took off everything. So that right there is showing us that his strength wasn't in the things that he had his strength and his and his warrior um and his warrior weapons were in the lord because here Saul is like let me get you ready let me get you suited and booted and let me put this all this gear on you and it says that David couldn't even walk on it because he wasn't used to it that wasn't part of the, his preparation because the preparation was a preparation that the Lord had him go through he was he knew how to use those tools he knew how, how to be prepared with what the Lord had showed him but with the things that other man tries to give you and those are not the tools that the Lord gave you um, it's not going to work. So he, he says that he took everything off and he says, so David took everything off. It says, then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch, which he had sling was in his hand and he drew to the Philistine. So all he took was five stones, a little bag that he had. It says where he took his staff. So he had a staff five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch where he had sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistines. So the Philistines came out and began to draw near David and the man bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked and saw David, he disdained him. So they're coming face to face, right? David and Goliath and Goliath is thinking like, what? is this going on here? Like you're giving me this little youth, you know, this young, this young boy. And it's, and it says that he gave him a disdain look for he was only a youth. So on here, it describes David as a youth and Rudy and good looking. 
So the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give you flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with the sword, with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the gods of army of Israel, whom you have defiled. So that is so powerful. Right there, God wants us to understand that the way that we win is not by the things that we grab on the natural. It's not by earthly ways that we win the battles, but the battles are won in the spirit realm. And the Lord is going to be the one who will win. Because David said, then David said to the Philistines, you're coming to me with a sword. You're coming to me with a spear and you're coming to me with a javelin. Those are things from the natural. It, but David said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. So whenever we're fighting an enemy, we're coming to the enemy in the name of the Lord. But right here, I love how they, they, they have names, right? We learn about the Lord, the banner. And then right here, it says the name of Lord of hosts. And you know what the Lord of hosts means? The Lord of battles, the Lord of hosts. So whenever you're in a battle, you said, I come to you in the name of the, the Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, who you have defiled. It says this day, I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give carcasses to the camp of the Philistine, to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword, with spears, and the battle is the Lord's, and he will give it to you in your hands. So right there, God wants to get the credit for whatever we do. So he says right here, right now, he said, you know, everybody will see that I come to you in the name of the Lord. It says, then the assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear. It says, for the battle belongs to the Lord, and he will give you into our hands. So God is going to be the one that will deliver our enemies into our hands. Number 48. So it was when the Philistines arose and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in the bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine into the forehead so that the stone sank to his forehead and he fell on his face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in his hand over David. Therefore, David ran and stood over the Philistine, took the sword and drew it out of his sheet and killed him and cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Now the men and now the men and pursued the Philistines as far as Ekron. So right there, David came out and David did what he always knew how to do. He knew how to do use a sling and he knew how to use a stone. And that's what is dead. And God gave him the knowledge and God gave him the power of how to take out your enemy because he, he could have used spears and he could have used swords, but in stinks, he used stones and he used a sling. And then it says that it went all the way into the forehead. And then when he died, just from that, it says that he got the sword and then that he cut his head off. But the whole purpose of this word and the whole purpose of this message was that there's two ways to fight in the war. You can be like Goliath and fight with your tools and fight with your weapons. Or you can be like the Lord and fight with the name of the Lord and let the Lord fight your battles for you. But it's not only that, is that Saul put the, the strength in himself. And when he saw himself compared to when he saw Goliath, he realized like, I, I am nothing. I can't take him out. But the difference was that David saw the strength that his faith and his strength was in the Lord and what the Lord can do and not what David could do. Never said, look at me, look at me, I'm so scared or nothing. He never acknowledged how he felt. He always acknowledged the Lord. 
And he said, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, his response was like, the Lord will free me. The Lord will give you into my hands. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. It was always about the Lord and what the Lord can do. And because of his faith and his trust in the Lord, the Lord was able to deliver him from Goliath. He said, the Lord has delivered me before and the Lord will do it again. But the difference was that we see that after this, everybody that saw that David won started praising him and started um, acknowledging what he had done. And from what we have read before is that Saul got um, so resentful towards David and he started hating on him and he started hating on him, on him. But that's the way that it is when we are called by the Lord, when we are anointed by the Lord and we move according to the spirit of the Lord, there will be people that will see us and that will say that will be jealous of the way that the anointing is working on some people. But the difference is that some people have surrendered their life fully to the Lord and their trust and their confidence is in the Lord and not on yourself. But I think we need to be really mindful because when you're in the when you're in the war, sometimes you don't acknowledge that you're putting your your trust and what you can do instead of putting your trust in the Lord. And God wants to reposition your eyes on God and saying like, it's not about you. You're never going to be able to defeat the enemies. But if you put in your trust and you look at me, I will be the one to defeat the enemies. He, and he says, you have to remember that says that I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is the one that comes with the battle, with the horses, with the chariots, and with the swords. It's God. God will come. The Bible says, um, you um, it says, be still, be still and know that I am God. So a lot of the times when we're in a war, we want to do all kinds of things, but all we need to do is just put our faith and our trust in God and be still until he gives us until he gives us direction to for the next move that we're going to be making so that was the lord the word that the lord had because god said you have two men you have david and then you have saul saul could have went out and fought but because he didn't keep his eye on me and he kept the eye on himself he shrunk down and said i will not go and then another man rose and took his position and then david became the next king and then he got mad. Why are you mad when you're the one that didn't want to fight? You're the one that didn't want to trust in the Lord. You're the one that didn't want to go out to battle. You're the one that told him to go out to battle. And now the people, the people and God, obviously God chose David to be the next king. So God wants us just to make sure that we are walking according to the ways that he has called us to amen so i will close out in prayer i will see you guys next week heavenly father i come before you lord i just thank you god for this word i thank you god because you know what's in our hearts father god you know father god our ways father god there's nothing hidden from you father god and you know father god that we are children lord we don't know sometimes, Father God, the things that are in our hearts, Father God, when we're in a war, when we're in a season, Father God, you see, Father God, that it said in the scripture, let not your hearts faint. And Father God, you know that when we're in war, our hearts start fainting, Father God. So we just thank you for the reminder, Father God, not to look to ourselves, not to put our trust in ourselves and what we can do, Father God, but thank you for reminding us, Father God, that you are the Lord of hosts host father god that this is nothing too hard for you father god and i thank you father god that if you have allowed it you would free us from it father god so i just thank you father god for your protection father god has we're in the war father god i thank you father god for provision in the war father god i thank you for a way of escape and father god in the war father god i thank you father god that we will Continue to do what we need to do in the war, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, for coming, Father God, to take our enemies out, Father God. Just as David did, Father God, he says, who are you uncircumcised Philistines? 
who comes to defy the name of the Lord, Father God. And we stand on your word, Father God, and we thank you, Father God, for the open doors and thank you for the closed doors, Father God, that will be closing, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for your anointing that breaks the yoke, Father God. And we just give you all the glory and the honor and we thank you for this word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you guys. I will see you guys next week if the Lord is willing. Be blessed and take care. Be on guard. The Bible says to be wise as the serpent and gentle as a dove. And you know that in the spirit realm, a lot of things are happening and we need to be on guard. We need to make sure that we are walking circumspectively. Pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to the people around you at work. Pay attention to the people around you, your circle. Continue to stay vigilant and continue to stay in prayer. Continue to stay close to the Lord. Continue to stay reading your word and put the phone down. Phone is very big distraction to what God is trying to do, what, what God is trying to say. And we need to just fight the urge and just put the phone down and just spend the time with God. Amen. I love you and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.